Hello everyone, another There I Said It. I am Aaron Bjork, lead shepherd and an elder of Fellowship at the Cross. God has sent me to be um, an encouragement, I believe, to the church. I think God uses me to light a fire uh, under the church, not to consume it uh, in a bad way, but hopefully to bring um, people uh, to a point where they stand up. The church has to stand up. The church has to be bold. The church has to speak truth, uh, and not try to make people happy or to uh, keep people at bay, so to speak. Uh, there's far too much uh, placating things that are happening uh, on behalf of church leadership, especially in the Western world. We don't want to make people upset because they might leave our congregation uh, and they might say they don't like us. Um, well, we need to speak the truth of God's word um, regardless of the situation. And uh, I'm tired of people saying that Jesus was always this sweet, loving man when he took a whip into the temple and turned over the money changers, and he did that twice, and he said, the zeal of my father's house has consumed me, uh, you know, things like that. And so, and also when Jesus comes back, he's coming back as a lion, not as a lamb. And so we have to remember, God wants us to speak truth uh, in love, but love is not this limp-wristed thing. The word that's used there is agape, and it means to speak who God is to people so that they would believe in him. Uh, love is uh, ultimately about protecting people's spirit, man, despite their flesh. And it also says that if you do not have God, you do not have love, for God is love. So if there's a whole bunch of people in the world that don't believe in God, but they say they have love, they're liars. The truth is not in them. So in light of what's going on and uh, in the world today, and, and of course, there's so many things. I mean, how can you even pinpoint one thing? And if you don't believe that the world is basically uh, coming apart at the seams and that all of creation is eagerly awaiting the revealing of the children of God, that it groans um, in its sinews, then you're uh, continuing to keep your head in the sand and refusing to open your eyes to what's going on. So in light of that, uh, you know, the coronavirus, uh, uh, the, the continue uh, removing of lampstand of the Western church, uh, P, uh, the church can uh, really, you know, continuing to be more about uh, the bottom line than about the gospel. Um, you know, the orange man bad syndrome, which is out there because, you know, he dare say like something mean uh, and he tweeted something that just forget what he does that we're just upset because of of what he said um and of course you know the election and uh all these there's just crazy things going on and that's just in america what about the rest of the world things that are happening in israel and all of that um this is what i've heard lately uh from some individuals they've said well god has placed uh, Joe Biden as our president, that means, you know, because he was elected, God appoints all of the leaders, all of the rulers. I want to remind you that's not always the case. Uh, it says in uh, Hosea chapter 8, put the trumpet to your lips like an eagle. The enemy comes against the house of the Lord because they have transgressed my covenant and rebelled against my law. They cry out to me, my God, we of Israel know you. Israel has rejected the good. And the enemy, because of that, will pursue him. They have set up kings, but not by me. They have appointed princes, but I did not know it. With their silver and gold, they have made idols for themselves, that they might be cut off. He has rejected your calf, O Samaria, saying, my anger burns against them. How long will they be incapable of innocence? For from Israel is even this, a craftsman made it, so it is not God. Surely the calf of Samaria will be broken into pieces. For they sow the wind and they reap the whirlwind. The standing grain has no heads. It yields no grain, should it yield strangers, would swallow it up. So, Here's the deal. Um, 
I want to encourage those of you who feel that all hope is lost. Uh, I want to remind you that if uh, Joe Biden is inaugurated on January 20th, and all the evidence points to the fact that he will be, even though the evidence should point to the fact that he won't, all hope is not lost. I want to remind you that it does not take uh, Donald Trump winning re-election in order for hope to abound. Uh, God uh, is does not uh, rely on the happenings of the world in order for there to be hope. Hope does not disappoint. And regardless what takes place, we know that if anyone is against us, it doesn't matter because God is for us. It's so vitally important that we remember that, that we understand that. Um, I want to point everyone to very uh, famous passages of Scripture that we all know. We all know this very well. James chapter 1. James, a bondservant of God and the Lord Jesus Christ, to the 12 tribes who are dispersed abroad, greetings. And he says, consider it a joy, my brothers and sisters, when you encounter various trials. Listen, I, I, I truly believe, and I might be in the minority, but I believe that a Joe Biden presidency will begin the real serious persecution of the church, all in the name of, a, of safety from a virus and all of that. Um, it's not going to be just about keeping us from worshiping together physically. Oh, and by the way, that is the purpose of coming together. You, you, uh, you can't lay hands on the sick so that they will recover if you're doing it over Zoom. All right? Don't, don't put words in God's mouth and change what the Bible says. There is a supernatural requirement of the laying on of hands and the praying for healing. Uh, Satan has successfully convinced most of the evangelical church that there is no more healing, unless, of course, God decides so, you know, whatever. Um, but we've, we've removed that, in my opinion, sacramental importance of the laying on of hands for healing. And it is part of the gospel. That's what the full gospel is. By his stripes we are healed goes with uh, salvation. You can't do that over Zoom. Now, God can work that way, but we've got to lay hands. And, 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 and so... Uh, it's not just going to be about keeping us from uh, coming together and worshiping that way. It, it's also, and, and the mask is not just about uh, uh, science and protecting us from disease. It's about covering the image of God and, and, and discouraging us from speaking the words of God. Read Ezekiel, speak to the dead bones so that they will live, and then speak to my breath, and tell my breath to come into the bones, and then they will live. And so you can see the enemy's agenda here. Um, but this platform is about uh, aborting babies at nine months without painkiller. And then even if they're destined for abortion, but they survive, they kill it on the table. Uh, that's what it's about. It's about socialism uh, and pushing, uh, 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 taking thing incentive away. Uh, some people say that we're so excited about uh, socialism because people's student loans will be forgiven. Well, here's the problem. Who pays for that? Okay, it, it, money doesn't grow on trees, it doesn't come out of a vacuum. So in other words, you go to college, you accrue a quarter million dollars debt, and you make someone else that didn't pay, uh, go to college pay for you to go to college. I'm sorry, I call that thievery. That's stealing, all right? Um, and if you don't think that, um, I'm sorry, you're crazy, all right? Um, so there's a whole lot of things that are coming. But here's the thing, regardless of what takes place, God is still on the throne. When I read my scripture, I see there's so many in the church that are saying, and, you know, a lot of them are supporting Trump, but they're saying Trump has to win because there's going to be this huge revival in the last days and, and all this. Well, there is a revival happening. Revival is not about physical numbers growth. Revival is about discipleship and people growing strong in their faith. It, 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 it's, it's not about necessarily having a, a, a big, you know, giant church buildings filled with people to the brim and putting lots of money in the coffer. By the way, God's done with that. It's about, it's about discipleship in homes. It's about small groups growing in intensity in their faith amidst persecution. Look what's happening in China in the church. You know, there's millions of Christians in China, and not like Christians in name only, Sinos, like we have in America. 
who go through the the pomp and circumstance and the rituals of sitting there, hobbity he, hobbity who, I worship God, sing from the handle. Then I go home and watch football and eat pot roast. No, these are people are being persecuted for their faith. They go to prison because they love Jesus. Six months, a year, three years, whatever. Then they come out having like led hundreds of people in prison to Jesus and then they're right back in worship with one another because of persecution. If, if Biden gets in, that's what's coming to America. That might not happen in the first year, but it's coming. You might say, oh, you, oh, come on. Biden's not about socialism. It, you, you're using, the, they're trying to protect and keep us safe. And did, oh, Come on. Do you honestly think that Satan's agenda, which is clearly laid out in the book of Revelation, would just come out exactly the way it was? What does it say? It says that the great deception is coming. Oh, by the way, God sends it because people wouldn't believe the truth. The great deception is coming. What? How? It would, it would deceive, if possible, even the elect. So if it's going to deceive the people of God... It's not that Satan's not going to come wearing a red cape with horns and saying, bow down and worship me now. And everyone's like, okay, yes, we do. No, it's going to be an agenda brought about for what? He's going to get people to want it. Don't you think that maybe Satan could use something like a virus to get you to surrender your freedoms? To bring about globalism, one world government, the Antichrist agenda, the mark of the beast? Oh, the... What, what about the coronavirus vaccine? Oh, that's just a vaccine to keep us safe. 250,000 people have died, supposedly, of coronavirus. The flu has gone way down. No one's getting the flu. No one's died of the flu this year. Oh, and by the way, usually every year, 200,000 people die of the flu. Oh, you don't think the virus is real? Didn't say that. I've lost family members to it. Don't you dare put that in my mouth. My wife and I have lost cousins, loved ones, friends to this. And some people are even my age that have died of it. And I grieve for that. I do think it's real. But I also know that Satan's using it for his agenda. And if you are willing to sacrifice your right and the command of God to come together and worship and lay hands on the sick so they will recover. If I have to hear one more time that Jesus would wear a mask and social distance, no, he would not. He would walk up to the sick and lay hands on them and heal them. The disciples said, don't touch the leper. You might get sick. And Jesus went right up and commanded it to come out. He would do the same thing today. And if you say he wouldn't, may God have mercy on your soul. Because you are dare saying that my Jesus is someone that he is not. So if you refuse to come together because you're afraid that you might die, you've forsaken Jesus Christ and your fellow brothers and sisters. You're a Christian in name only. You do it when it's safe. You do it when it's convenient. Not when you're being persecuted. And persecution isn't just people. Persecution can be environment, a virus, a situation. So will you stand? You know, Trump's not the savior of the world. Jesus is. So if he gets in, okay, will you stand? Personally, I think that if Trump was to get back in and we get four more years of prosperity for the church to actually be free to go about and do what it's to do and the economy gets continues to get better and all this stuff and we keep socialism at bay, which is anti-Christian. People that say, oh, yeah, I'm a Christian socialist. That's, that's like saying I am a God-believing atheist. That doesn't make any sense because a basic tenet through Karl Marx and these other people of socialism is to not believe in God. Do your homework. But... If Trump gets in and everything gets great, I think the church would just get lazy. I think the last four years we were lazy. Biden gets in, no, it doesn't mean that we're all going to go to hell and die and suffer. It very well means that uh, we're going to come together and be stronger. I want to encourage you when we're persecuted, when we're experiencing trials and difficulties. But I want to say this. If you are willing to sacrifice the truth of the word of God because orange man bad. If you worship the God of politics, conservative or liberal, ahead of your faith in God and the truth of his word, if you believe in science more than the Bible, you have to repent. Now. Because we're coming into a time, regardless of what happens 
in the near future. Where God continues to draw a line in the sand and he says, which side are you on? Are you going to put me first ahead of all the things that may be coming? You know what? We may get to a point where we're standing in front of a firing squad for our faith. Where will you be? What will you say? Those who wish to save their life will lose it. Those who wish to give up their life for the sake of God and his gospel will find it. I think we're coming into a time where we're really going to start to see that happen. Is that revival? Yeah, I'd say so. I'd say it is. So press in. Read the word. Believe in truth. Stand for truth. Lastly, I want to say this. There's a lot of folks that uh, their hatred for our president is because of things that he says. They ignore the things that he's done in the last four years. They focus on the things that he says. And they voted for someone else because he says nice things, even though his platform is completely ungodly. You might say, that's not ungodly. He wants philanthropy to take care of people. Jesus never did philanthropy without supernatural power and the truth of God's word. If you do philanthropy without the truth of God's word, you're actually hurting people because you're removing their need without teaching them the truth and leading them to salvation, which is satanic. It's about the gospel. Philanthropy is a tool to give them the gospel. When Joe Biden starts preaching the gospel of Jesus Christ is the only way to salvation, I'll support him. I would be surprised if he does that. I'm going to pray for it, and I pray for him if he gets in office. And I'm not going to have senile man bad syndrome. That's not going to happen. But you see, here's the thing. There were people in Jesus' time that they said nice things, but their actions were garbage. They were called the Pharisees. Then Jesus was someone who said very politically incorrect and sometimes very mean things. But it was about his actions. No, I'm not comparing Donald Trump to Jesus. But there are people in our lives that repent from really bad things much worse than Donald Trump. They put their faith in God. They come to the altar. They, they say they believe in Jesus. They repent of their sins, and they, in many ways, their ways and actions start to change. It's kind of what happened to Donald Trump. Oh, that can't be true. He can't be saved. You can't judge him. You don't know. You'll know them by their fruit. Well, look at his fruit compared to the fruit of those who are against God and worship the God of atheism and socialism. So I'm putting this issue to bed. I'm going to be talking about other things moving forward. No more election stuff. But I want to encourage you. Until the last fire has gone out, until the last bastion of hope has died, stand firm. Continue to pray, fast, and believe. Don't give up. Because at the last minute, when the nation of Israel was backed up to the Red Sea, and Pharaoh was pressing in, and they all would have been slaughtered, that's when God told Moses, put your staff in. He divided it. They crossed. Not even a calf was destroyed. And then the water came in and destroyed their enemies. If God did it then, he can do it now. Thank you guys for watching. Be blessed and be a blessing.